So what we have here is the ECU tester setup. So we have an ECU and it is connected by cables to the ECU tester. It's connected with a set of screw terminals. This is the ECU inputs and outputs. This is the power supply for the ECU and the injector outputs. We have a 12 volt supply uh, coming in from a, a brick uh, power supply and that goes that powers the ECU and we also have an MPS connected as well. Now you notice there's no wiring harness here. The MPS is connected to the ECU via the tester itself and then we have a USB connection to uh, a laptop and that's all that's required. Also a mighty vac or similar to control the uh, manifold vacuum. And that is the entire setup needed for bench testing a DJtronic ECU. We control the ECU tester using the free DJtronic Studio application, which is available from djetronic.org. We start by connecting to the ECU tester. And in its initial state, we can see that there is no pulse width. So there's nothing happening because the um, ECU has been essentially turned off with an engine speed of zero. We're going to set it to cold idle from the preset list. The, the uh, cold idle sets the speed to 1200 RPM. And we can see that the pulse widths are all 10.53, 10.58 milliseconds with an average of 10.55. If we change the preset to hot idle, the engine speed is now 700 RPM. The coolant temperature has gone up from 32 degrees to 101 degrees. And we can see that the pulse widths are significantly shorter. They're almost half the width. So almost half the fuel has been injected. Let's try hard acceleration. And we can see that throttle went up to 95%, the engine speed went up to 6000 RPM and the pulse widths are at 7%, so a little bit longer than the uh, hot idle. Now let's take a look at the operation of the start signal. So if we set the engine speed to 20 RPM, the starter motor is currently off. And the engine speed is 20 RPM and the fuel pump is toggling off and on. So if we take a look at what that looks like on a chart, so we start recording data, we go to charting and we choose the fuel pump. Now in this case, zero, um, zero volts is on and 12 volts is off. And we can see that in this condition with the engine slowly being turned, but no starter motor, the fuel pump is turning off and on, off and on repeatedly. Let's try changing this to 50 RPM, slightly faster. We can see that it's still doing the same thing, but it's um, spending a little bit more time in the turned on state. Obviously this is not good for the vehicle. Let's make it to 60 RPM. And now it's spending more time turned on in fact, it seems to be continually working at this speed. So if we go back down to 40 RPM, we're back to the fuel pump being turned off and on and off and on. Now we set the signal to the ECU to tell it that the starter motor is operating. And what that does is it tells the ECU to turn the fuel pump on continuously. So the ECU takes a signal from the starter motor, says, okay, the starter motor is cranking, but the engine speed is not fast enough to sustain operation. So I need to keep injecting fuel continuously. If we go back and turn off the starter motor, we can see the fuel pump is back to toggling again. And we can see the pulse widths are 11 milliseconds of this state. If we set the engine speed to zero, then injection is turned off completely. So the fuel injection does not happen at an engine speed of zero. 
let's try five and even at five RPM it's not enough to even start injection at 10 no pulse width turn on the starter motor it's still not enough it needs to be moving faster than 10 There we can see injection is just starting now at around about 20 RPM. So that is a brief demonstration of the ECU tester and the kind of things that you can experiment with using a real ECU.